Hey, what's up, everybody? D Amazing here, bringing you another review. The sounds of the SH Figure Arts Joker Dark Knight version. Well, let's get started. First, I want to start by saying I was not very excited for this. Um, it looks really cool. It's a Heath Ledger Joker. It's definitely a step in the right direction for all the many things that we want. But the problem is, I am not a big fan of the Christopher Nolan stuff. So getting this wasn't a priority for me. But it turns out I'm actually really enjoying the figure a lot more than I wanted to. It's limited in a lot of ways. But considering how you may enjoy some of the things about the figure, you know, we'll get into that. Because it's, it's tough to explain in words, but I guess I, it's better that I show you. I want to start by saying the figure is pretty much clean and accurate. It's a very good look that streams line the look of Heath Ledger in the movie. And I think that's really cool. I also think that they did a good job of making sure it's as much as possible, uh, as clear cut the Joker as you're going to get. So while some things were sacrificed, they made up for it in other ways. And I, and I really do appreciate that. So first, we're going to get started on the actual face sculpt. Now, the thing is, you can't really tell because it's the face paint, but it's actually done really, really well, especially in person. I don't know if you guys can see this really well, but it's definitely a, a ways much better than their prototype pictures. Ooh, sorry about that. <laughs> also, the hair is not all shiny. It's actually a semi-gloss, and it's really nice. And I appreciate the fact that they are listening. You know, everyone's tired of the shiny hair, and you kind of get what you want here to step in the right direction. And hopefully it'll be something that we continue to get further than down the line. It may be mess ups along the way, but it is what it is, right? So you obviously get this normal, not smiling, but a neutral face for Joker. <clears throat> but here, you have a more smirking, smiling face. And what's really cool about this is that, like I said, you may not be able to see it here, but man, it looks a ton better in person. Like, I mean, really a lot better. And it's something where I kept saying to myself, like, oh, I'm not really going to enjoy it. But they pretty much nailed it, including the smiling face. I think the only thing that they probably may have uh, taken a step back on were the eyes. It's a little hard with the, with the spotty black paint. But as you can see here, they really nailed it. So I think in terms of faces, it's actually pretty much nailed down. Now, in terms of articulation, here's where I have a little bit of issue. Articulation is a big deal for me because I like to do things that you normally don't see. Uh, but uh, posing-wise... Joker can actually get a few poses that I didn't think he would do, but he's limited in neck articulation. He can look down, he can look side to side, he can rotate his head, not all the way around, but about 270 degrees. The problem is he can't look up. He can look straight, but cannot look up. And that's a little, uh, one of those things where I, I can't do the, the high rise uh, shots with Batman versus him or anything like that. So it's a little disappointing. Also, there's no real bicep swivel on the Joker. It actually rotates, but it's very limited by the jacket. So that's one thing you got to worry about. One thing that does make up for it is that you do get the, the lower forearm swivel. Something that I wasn't actually expecting on the figure where when you rotate it, it actually rotates all the way around. So you got to make sure you fix that joint too, because what happens is the joint can rotate as well. It's something I really wasn't expecting. The hand pegs are really nice, but the small joints allow for the hands to easily fall off. So just be aware of that. Um, that way you don't lose any hand parts. Joker can actually rotate the arm all the way around. And it's weird because with other jacketed figures, you actually don't get this level or realm of articulation. But it is really nice. It's just it's missing that extra bicep swivel you need, especially for a jacketed figure. The jacket is not cloth, but it is done really well. I like the design on the inside. Gives you that nice added detail you normally didn't think you would get. If you're not a big fan of these type of jackets and you want to be able to do a flowing pose, the best thing I can tell you is to heat it up in hot water or use the blow dry technique. That way you can fold it back and it'll hold in place for a bit. So that's a little tip there for you guys. But as you clearly can see, SHF didn't skimp on actual detail on the figure. Maybe it might need a black wash if you want to do dirty to suit. But as far as a clean cut design, this is actually really, really nice. So I, I'm really appreciative of it. The legs actually rotate really well. They can come up pretty high. It's literally like getting a Tony Stark figure here. The joint is really rotated pretty well. Um, the ball joint is actually really nice. Again, you can actually rotate this as well, left and right. Not too far, but enough that if you wanted to get enough poses, you can. And another, the other problem is, like I said, without him looking up, when you want to do poses like him looking creepy and up and forward, you have to aim at really low angles. So it's not something that I like doing because as you can see here, it looks really good, but I have to aim at a lower level. So it's a little disconcerting. The foot has, uh, oh, sorry. The foot has ankle pivot. I was at a loss for words for a second. <laughs> so I'm really happy about that. You actually get the toe pivot as well. 
So overall, Joker isn't a bad figure. It's just not for people who love posing way too well. But if you're going to nail movie-like poses, I think you'll be in a step in the right direction where you'll like the figure a lot. Now, Joker comes with a rocket launcher. As seen in the movie. The rocket doesn't detach, so that's a little disappointing. So, And he also comes with a machine gun. Also pretty nice. Joker also comes with a knife. Really cool stuff. Now, as far as hands go, Joker gets two sets of relaxed hands. I actually have both on. One of them with the more curvy-like finger poses. So you actually do a bit of pointing or, or what you want to do with whatever it is. Where you're kind of enchanting or being nice. Then you have the other ones where they're relaxed. More so relaxed, open. You get the closed fists, which are standard for the figure, which actually come stock on the figure. Oh, let's not forget, and I almost forgot. Joker also comes with hands for holding his one singular playing card, which is a Joker card. So you just pop it in here. Do -do -do -do. He comes with two hands for it, and he holds it. He actually doesn't hold it as well as I thought he would, so that's a little concerning. It's still very nice. He comes with two hands for holding his knife. And either side, he's ambidextrous at cutting you, so it works out. And a hand for holding the machine gun and the rocket launcher. One on each side, so you have nothing to worry about. Joker actually is really nice. It's just very limited in terms of articulation. But as far as looks go and nailing it, I think they did a great job. One thing I want to talk about is, because I know people are going to ask this question, how does it compare with other Jokers? So I'm going to give you a size comparison with other Jokers first before I compare them to other figures, including the Batman. Uh, the other two Jokers that I have are the Mezco Joker and the Mafex one. So comparison-wise, as usual, he is going to be the smallest one. SHF is actually on the smaller scale than the rest of these guys. So comparison-wise, he's obviously going to be shorter. Still fits in really nice. It's nice to have a bunch of different Jokers, right? Next up, we have him against your main man, Batman, the Christian Bale version. So let's get him in a honky-tonk standing vanilla pose. Honky-tonk man. Batman's legs are spread a little wide, so let me just fix that. So as far as height goes, he's in a nice scale with Batman. I like it. Even though Joker's legs are spread a little far apart, you can tell that they're around a nice height where they can compete with each other and they don't seem a little too out of scale. I like that a lot. Now, compared to other lines like Marvel Legends or SHF, here he is next to a Marvel Legends Daredevil, which obviously he's smaller. Some SHF just don't stack up when it comes to comparing them to other figures, but Bandai usually scales well within its own lines. So just for the record, here he is next to an SH figure that's Kamen Rider Amazon Alpha. And just like I predicted, they're around the same size. So scaling-wise, it's more of a thing where it's not going to be with the American counterparts or the Mafex counterparts. It kind of fits in with its own thing. But I feel like if you had Marvel Legends goons or any type of army builder that he can go against where he, you know, thugs, I think he fit in just fine. I don't think it's one of those things where it'll stand out too much. In the meantime, guys, I hope you enjoyed the photos at the end. I hope you're being good. I hope you do good. And most of all, drink your water and keep your hearts full. Later.